If you have your Bible, Matthew, Matthew chapter 1, um, we're talking about the Christmas non-negotiables. The Christmas non-negotiables is what we're going to be talking about. If you have your Bible, Matthew chapter 1, and we'll start reading in verse 18. I'm excited. How many of y'all are excited? Oh, I'm so excited. Amen. The Bible says here in Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 through 23, it says, Now the birth, the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. So here's what it says. If you want to know about Jesus Christ, here's how his birth was, here's how it is. Here's how it follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed with, to Joseph, before they came together, before they were married, now I want y'all to think about this, before they were married, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. And how would you like for your wife to come home and say, honey, I'm pregnant, and by the Holy Spirit? Come on, men. Yeah, you'd probably had a Joseph moment. Hallelujah. You'd probably had a Joseph moment. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, but listen, he said, he said this word. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, a good man, a man of faith, he says, uh, and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. Verse 20. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel. Well, I don't believe in angels. Well, you don't believe in the Bible. If you don't believe in angels, you don't believe in the Bible. Because the Bible says, then that what? An angel. An angel. And watch this. Whether you believe it or not, everybody in here has got an angel. They're watching over you right now, believe it or not. There's guardian angels too. You know the reason why we can have a good worship service? Because we've got guardian warring angels all around this church that is protecting the Holy Ghost that's inside this church. You better believe in it. I'm telling you, so watch what it says. But an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph. Now they talk. Well, I don't believe they talk. Well, you don't believe in the Bible. I'm just saying. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid. Because you know, the first thing that happens when God shows up, fear sets on the people. They, they start getting afraid. Watch this. Do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife. For that what which is conceived in her, I love this, is of the Holy Spirit. It's of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name, I love this, Jesus. Jesus, what a name. Jesus. Listen, even the devil still trembles at the name of Jesus. Every devil in hell, when you say Jesus, has to flee. So listen to this, so good, I love this. For he, well, he listen, here's why Jesus came to earth, you ready? Not to make you rich. <laughs> Not to get you a big house. Watch what it says. And for he shall save his people from their sins. Hallelujah. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. I want to preach real quick. Y'all with me? Somebody say amen. I want to preach real quick on the subject, the Christmas non-negotiables. The Christmas non-negotiables. Listen, I've been preaching now for 22 years. Everybody say 22 years. Yes, yeah, sometimes I feel it. 22 years. And I've learned over the years, especially dealing with church people, especially dealing with denominations and people, that there are certain things that we debate about. Now, let me just <laughs> run through the list really quick on things that Christian people debate about, that they negotiate about. We debate about when the rapture is going to take place. We've got, we got Christians who say, well, it's pre or it's mid or it's post-rapture. We debate about the Sabbath day. Should we worship on Saturday or should we worship on Sunday? We debate about tongues in the Bible. It, it does, is tongues, we debate about this, we negotiate this. Is tongues still for today? Is it in the Bible? I'll let y'all answer that yourself, hallelujah. And we debate about church structure. Who, who determines how the church is going to be ran? Who's over this and who's over that? We debate about divorce and remarriage. My God, if you want to see a quick church fight, <laughs> you, you start talking about divorce and remarriage in a church and you will see a church go cray cray. You will see that. Listen, and also we talk, we, we debate about, uh, about Holy Communion. We, we debate, should we use real wine or grape juice? How many of y'all have ever heard that one before? Does the bread and the juice literally become the body of Jesus? There's people out there says that literally when we take communion today, that that bread becomes his body and the juice becomes his blood. There are people out there that literally believe that. Or do we just believe as Christians and Southern Baptists that, that, that the bread and the wine just literally, literally just take a transformation of the body and the blood? 
What do we believe about, believe about that? You know what? We even debate about baptism. I hear this all the time. Do, they, do we dip them or do we sprinkle them? Or do, do they need to be immersed? Or do we just throw water on them on their head and just sprinkle them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? You know, we, we talk about when you baptize people, do they, do they get baptized? Do we dialogue about this? We debate about this? We negotiate about this? Do you baptize people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost? Or do you do what Mark said, just baptize them in Jesus' name? What do you do? We debate about, we negotiate about all these things in the Bible. The church, listen to me, has fought and argued and debated for years. Watch this. Denominations have split. Families have split. Churches have split. All because they fight and argue and debate on issues and doctrines and theology. Theology, uh, oh man, denominate, all these stuff. They debate about these things. But listen, I've come to the conclusion. After 22 years of preaching, you ready? All that stuff, y'all ready? It really doesn't matter. It really, listen to me. Listen to me very carefully. It really doesn't matter. Because watch this, watch this. It really doesn't matter what you think about if Jesus Christ is going to come back or not. Y'all ready? He's coming back. It really, really don't matter if you believe in the rapture, the tribulation, or the millennium. Guess what? The tribulation, the, the rapture, and the millennium will take place. It will take place. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. And I, I wrote this down in my notes. We can argue on which day should we worship, on Saturday or Sunday. But watch this. If you really don't ever worship, what, what does it matter what day you worship on? You can come to church all you want to, but that don't mean you worship. So if you're really not worshiping, Brother Willie, it really doesn't matter if it's Saturday or Sunday. I just say worship. Oh, what about this one? It really don't matter if you believe in tongues or not. Or you Listen, you can speak in tongues all day long. But if you don't have love in your life, if you don't love your neighbors, you love yourself, if you're not a walking love pond, listen, I'm telling you, you're just a clinging symbol. So listen, you, you can speak in tongues all you want to. But if you don't have love, <laughs> all you are is a noise. All you are is a noise. And listen, there's some things that we have debated. I remember when I was in a, the seminary, I mean cemetery. <laughs> we debated, we dialogued, we, we fussed, we fight. Well, the Bible says this and the Bible says that. Do you got to be, to be saved, do you truly got to be baptized and this, that, and the other? And I finally just, I had, a, I had a moment. I said, you know what? If Jesus Christ on the cross is not big enough to save me, water never will. Water never will. Water never will. So there's some things, there are some things are non-negotiable. There are some things, you watch this, don't waste your time, don't waste your oil, don't waste your next breath on. Listen, if you are a child of God, these things I'm getting ready to give you right now are non-negotiable if you are a Christian. Turn to your neighbor and say, some things, come on, turn to somebody, if they ain't listening to, tell somebody, some things are non-negotiable. Oh, I'm ready. How many of y'all ready for the word? Y'all ready for it? Here we go. Hallelujah. I want y'all to move on in just a little bit. Just ease on up just a little bit. Give me your ear just for a moment, okay? The Christmas non-negotiables, number one. The first thing that is non-negotiable was Jesus was born from a virgin. We fight about tongues. I have more of a problem of a 14 to a 17-year-old little girl giving birth to a holy, by the Holy Spirit by, to Jesus Christ then I do tongues. We're fighting over tongues. And I'm sitting there going, how does somebody who is not married been with somebody, have not been with somebody, and have a baby? Told you, I don't understand that. I don't understand. But listen, the Bible says in Matthew 1, 23, Behold, the virgin Mary shall be with a child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Jesus, Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Watch this, you ready? I don't understand that. How many of y'all understand that, a virgin having a baby? But we say we believe that, right? That is a non-negotiable thing when someone says, Brian, do you really believe that a virgin had a baby? I don't think about it. I don't question it. I don't negotiate it. I sit there and go, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I believe that Jesus Christ was born from a virgin named Mary, and he's still alive today. Somebody give God praise. I just believe that. I just believe that. And you know what really amazed me? I did a deeper study on this. You know why he chose Mary? Because she was pure. She was holy. 
She was consecrated. She was, watch, innocent. She was without spot or without blemish. And that was exactly, that's exactly what the Holy Spirit wants to do to me and you. Listen, the Holy Spirit will never land upon you. You will never birth a spiritual thing in your life if you're holding things and you've got dirty hands. If you've got a dirty hands and you've got a dirty heart and a dirty mind, you cannot hold the presence of Jesus Christ. Why did he choose a little teenage girl to birth in Jesus Christ? She was innocent. She was pure. She was holy. She was a virgin for God's sake. And he says, I want her. I just want her today. If you're wanting to hold the Spirit of God, do you have a virgin spirit? Do you have a virgin spirit under my teaching here today? You're wanting God, but you're, you don't have a virgin spirit. In other words, you're, you're doing things in the world that don't recognize God, don't recognize those things. Is your hands dirty? Is your heart dirty? Is your mind dirty? Are you dirty? You say, Brian, this is not a Christmas message. Yes, it is. Because if God is wanting to birth a spiritual thing through your life, you've got to have spiritual hands to hold it. You've got to have a virgin spirit to hold it. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. The second thing I want to give you what God birthed into me was, that's non-negotiable, is that Jesus lived a sinless life. Sinless. Listen, guys, guys. Sinless. Sinless. This is what the Bible says. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15, for, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize Hallelujah. With our weaknesses. But one who has been tempted. He has been tempted in all things as we are. Well, God don't know what I'm going through. Excuse me. Yes, he does. He has been tempted. And he has been tested. He has been tried. But he has proven himself to be faithful in this house today. And for thousands of years behind, God had a sinless life and he's still sinless today. He's without sin. So church, I don't understand that either. How in the world can somebody walk through this earth, through this time, through this place, and have a sinless life? I don't understand that, but I don't debate that. I don't negotiate that. I don't fight about that. I don't even dialogue about that. Because why? Listen to me. The Bible says every word in your Bible has been established. It has been sealed by the Holy Ghost, and it is now in heaven, and you cannot change the Word of God. Sometimes I think the reason why we are the way that we are is because we're trying to make the Bible come to us. We are trying to make the Bible fit our lifestyles. We are trying to make God see where we're at today. But listen, the Bible will never compromise to the worldly ethics. The Bible will not compromise into a sinful situation. Even when Jesus Christ was on that cross, think about this, all the sin. Everybody say all the sin. Everybody say all the sins. Everybody say my sins. Nailed him to the cross. It nailed him to the cross. And that brings me to my third point. Boy, everybody say, he's flying today. And number three, Jesus died on the cross for us. I don't debate it. <laughs> I don't negotiate it. I don't dialogue about it. Watch this. It don't matter if you believe it or not. Watch this. I do. No, the world won't change my mind. Churches can't change my mind. Nobody's changing my mind because I've read the Bible. Some 2,000 years ago, I love this story. Jesus, he was beaten. He was tied to a post. And I, I don't want this story to ever get old to you. I don't want this story to ever become a Christmas. Watch this. I don't want this story to become a Christmas story to y'all. Because he done it for us. He done it for you, sir. You say, Brian, I'm too bad. No, he didn't think so. They literally tied his hands to a whipping post. You say, Brian, you believe that? Every word in it, I believe it. They tied him to a whipping post. They got a cat of nine tails, a whip. They put broken glass. They put bones of animals that had been crushed. They put leather around it, and they made a whip out of it. And they tied your Jesus, your Savior, your Lord, your Master to a whipping post. And the Romans were perfect about execution. They, were per they knew that they could whip him 39 lashes, and they knew he wouldn't die. And I, I remember in my mind, the Roman guards was there, and I remember him taking his finger and going, 
he told the Roman soldiers, start whipping him. You start beating him till you see blood. You start beating him until he can't even walk no longer. The Bible says in Isaiah, they beat him so bad that you couldn't even recognize his face. They beat your Jesus so bad you couldn't recognize his face. But let me make it very clear to you this morning. When Jesus was on that cross, everybody in this world was on his mind. Hallelujah. God didn't leave nobody out. I don't care how bad you are. I don't care where you've been, who you've been with, what sin you wrestle with today. My God, he forgave every single one of them when he died on that cross. Somebody give God praise in here. He died for all your sins, your, every one of them in Jesus' name. You are forgiven because you're under the blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why, I listen to me, I don't understand that. And I always had in my mind, I said, my God, if I'd have been there, I'd have stopped him. I don't know what I'd have done. I may have had been like Peter and said, you know what, I don't know him. Well, I'll never do that. You don't know you wasn't there. But I'm so thankful that my God, when he was on that cross, and the Bible says 600 people, y'all think about this, 600 people spit on him. Spit on him. Listen, if God can die for you, listen to me, if God can die for you, the least you can do is live for him. The least we can do here on Christmas morning is that, listen, he was born, he was birthed, he may have been put on a cross, he may have been put in a tomb, but my God, he got up out of that grave and he's still out of the grave today in Jesus' name. Woo! Hallelujah. You say, Brian, settle down. I ain't settling down. Because I believe the Bible. I get excited about it. I get excited about Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I want y'all to turn to your neighbor and say, Neighbor, Jesus loves you so much. He died for you. I seen a, I called him my little spiritual son. He was up here when the people getting baptized. A lot of you seen him. Little boy. How old is he? Three years old. And I said, God, how come when we grow up, we got to get sophisticated? God, how come when we grow up, we lose our childlike heart? How come we get so grown up, we say, well, that service is for the young people. That service is for our children. Listen to me, we are all children of the Most High God. Never lose your fire. Never lose your zeal. Never forget, my God, where he brought you from. <laughs> Woo! For the Holy Ghost. I tell people all the time, don't tell me. Listen to me. Well, Brian, do you believe that you can fall from grace? Here's what I'll tell you about that. If your sin can nail him back to the cross, yes, you can. But when he died for all the sins of the world, their past, your present, and your future sins, the Bible said he died once and once for all. And when he died for my sins and your sins, watch this, it is eternally settled in heaven. I just don't, I tell people all the time, you ain't that big of a boy. You ain't that big of a boy. You ain't that, your sin is not that big that it's going to nail him back to the cross. Well, Brian, what about this sin? He died for it. Well, Brian, what about adultery? He died for it. Brian, what about fornication? He died for it. Brian, what about having another God? He died for it. Brian, what about cussing, lying, chewing, and doing? He died for it. Woo! How many of y'all are glad this morning he died for all your sins? Come on, every one of your sins. See, the church, Mitchell, the church has forgot about that. You know why? Here's how the church lives. Y'all ready? They live like Jesus is still dead on the cross. They live like Jesus is still in a tomb. They live like, they, they said, God, I sinned. He's like, tell me something I don't know. But I love this. The Bible says when you try to remind God of your sins, he reminds you of his grace. When you try to say, God, I did this. Here's, what, here's, God, here's God's answer. Y'all ready? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't know what you're, God's ever going, dude, I don't, he don't say dude, but anyway, that's, that's my Kentucky word. 
How many of you are glad God saves Kentucky people too? Aren't you? <laughs> I'm so thankful for that. But we try to remind God, God, I've done this and I've done that. You say, well, Brian, why do I got to confess my sins? Watch this. It is not for him, it is for you. It is to make sure that your spirit is still sensitive to God. That when you do wrong, that your, your spirit inside of you is sitting there going, oh my God, I can't do that no more. Listen, you don't need a preacher or a prophet or a priest standing in front of you. You've got the Holy Ghost inside of you and he will teach you everything you need to know in life. Merry Christmas, church. Hallelujah. I'm trying to preach. We still live like he's on the cross. I was at a, a funeral home and I was in there and this, there was a picture of Jesus on the wall and he was still on the cross. And I said, man, what do you got that picture up there for? He said, man, he said, we're a Christian company. And he said, we believe in Jesus Christ. I said, but you got false advertisement. You, you, got, you got false advertisement. He said, what do you mean? I said, hey, he's not on the cross. He's not on the cross. He's not in the tomb no more. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Come down, preacher. No, let's give God a shout. Let's make hell tremble. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe what I'm preaching this morning. I believe what I'm preaching this morning. Hallelujah. I believe what I'm preaching this morning. How many of y'all are thankful for your salvation? Hallelujah. 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 Well, I just wish they would sit down. You're at the wrong church, sir. Well, they get too happy there. Yes, sir. We believe that the cross is empty. We believe that the tomb is empty. And we believe that God is coming back. Could be today. God, what if Jesus were to come back right now? I can just see him as up there playing them drums. I'm telling you, my insides were shaking. It's been a long time, Willie, <laughs> since I felt my liver quiver. That's good right there, isn't it? Woo, I had a preach right there. Woo, liver quiver. I'm going to preach a sermon, quiver liver. Hallelujah. That's good. God, thank you. Because I can't come up with that that quick. Yeah. <laughs> Let me go on. I want to honor you. I love y'all. Man, Merry Christmas. And you say, Brian, I don't understand this stuff. I don't either. I just know it's non-negotiable. Some things in my life are non-negotiable. I believe when Jesus Christ saved me, he saved me. Now listen, I'm a work in progress. How many of you are a work in progress? Yeah, you, we all are. If your hand ain't up, you're you definitely a double dog working in progress. You know what I'm saying? You, you're a work in progress. We all are. We need each other. We need Jesus Christ. Number four, Jesus was buried and resurrected. That's non-negotiable in my life. That Jesus Christ, they just saying praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Jesus was buried and resurrected. Everybody say Jesus was buried and resurrected. How many of y'all believe that? Can I talk you out of it? Huh? How, how do y'all know Jesus is, he was buried and resurrected? How, how do y'all believe it? Listen, don't be one of them Christians say, well, um, I just know. You believe his word. And it don't matter if ABC, NBC, CNN, all the media, it doesn't matter what they say. I'm telling you, listen to me, Jesus Christ was buried, but he didn't stay dead. On the third day, I got good news, hallelujah, he got back up. And I don't care what nobody says, I don't debate it, I'm not negotiating it. It's settled, it is established in my life. And watch this, I believe that. I believe that. He, he got up. He got, everybody say he got up. He got up. Number five, this is it. Hallelujah. Number five. This is, this is it right here. Jesus is coming back to get his people. <laughs> Jesus is coming back. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost on heaven. He, he's coming back. He is coming back. He is coming back. I believe Gabriel's lips are on the trumpet and they can sound any time. He's coming back. I believe that heaven is getting ready to split. Hey, I believe that. That's good news. That's what the Bible is. Watch this. The Bible is not bad news. So if you're under a pastor that all it's, I'm talking about, man, is Debbie Downer, 
Is Beulah her foreign no more? All he does is just sit and spit on you and cause condemnation. Watch this. That is not God. We serve a good father. Hallelujah. We serve a God that did not stay dead. And watch this. I believe, and I believe this with all my heart. Listen, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please settle that today. Please listen to me. Don't walk out that door saying, I just don't know. Please don't walk out that door. You're here right now. What a God moment this would be. I was doing a revival one time. It was a three-night revival, but they closed it down after the first night. Imagine that. I get a lot of one-time invitations. I was preaching, and a man walked the aisle. He walked right up to me, and he said, Man, I'm, I got something going on inside of me right now. I said, That's called Jesus. called the Holy Spirit. He said, Man, listen, I, I'm getting ready to mess you up. And I'm like, Oh, God. He said, I, I've been a deacon here for 15 years. And I, I don't know Jesus. I led that man to the Lord. I did. I led that man to the Lord. But as soon as I led him to the Lord, and I'm talking the Holy Spirit come down, that altar was filled up. People were getting saved. Things were changing I'm talking about, man, Jesus, the fragrance of God was in the atmosphere. But let me tell you what happened. When a church is ran by a man, you might as well close your doors. After I was finished, I got called to a meeting. Everybody say, oh, no. Yeah, 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 I, I said that too. When I got in there, he, he had a check, and he slid it across the desk, and I looked at the check. It was a pretty good amount of money. And he said, son, we're done. And I said, why? He said, you have embarrassed us. I said, how do I embarrass you? He said, Deacon so-and-so was saved and on his way to heaven, and now all my people are confused. And I, I'm sorry, y'all, I'm not very politically correct. I'm, I'm not. Because when you are wrong, watch this, you are wrong. Heaven never, hallelujah, embarrasses nobody. And I believe in them under my teaching, under my preaching today, there's somebody here today that needs Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. You're at the right place at the right time. And God has you here. He's got your attention. Please don't walk out that door the same way you walked in. I told him, I said, sir, first of all, this service is not my service. It's God's service. And I said, second of all, oh, by the way, they dismissed that deacon because he embarrassed them. And I looked at him and I said, I'm glad it's over. I'm glad it's over. Because here's what I know. If you don't want the Spirit of God, Ichabod, 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 Ichabod will be written over your doorpost. The Lord has departed. Listen, when somebody gets saved, if the angels in heaven are rejoicing, I want to join in on what's already taking place in heaven. If somebody who was lost and dying and going to hell, I don't care if you're a pastor, a deacon, or an elder, or a lifelong church member. Watch this. One day your heart's going to stop. I know, I know, I know that. Just make sure that you get things right with Jesus Christ. Let me read this to you and I'm, I'm finished. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I love this. Verse 51 through 58. Let me read this over you and I'm, I'm finished. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, I love this. Behold, I, I tell you a mystery. We should not all sleep. In other words, not watch this, you ready? Not all of us is going to die in here. That means the rapture, Jenna, could happen right now. Could y'all imagine the horn? Now, I know Brother Terry and Spencer and Scott and Greg and all of them, they blow the shofar as best they can. But I'm going to tell you, the next horn that we sound from heaven is going to be a universal horn. It's going to go north, east, south, and west. Every person on earth, hallelujah, is going to hear this horn. And the Bible says, let me go and read this. Good. Oh, we should not all sleep, but we should be changed. I love this. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, some scholars say in nine-tenths of a second, nine-tenths of a second. Watch this. But time, you do this. You ready? You're gone. Time, you blink your eyes. Everybody blink your eyes. Gone. That fast, the horn's going to sound. I love this. For the trumpet will sound the last trumpet. Everybody say last trumpet. 
This is it. This is, this is it. This is the call. Do you know him? For the trumpet was sounding the dead. Hallelujah. My daddy, my granny, my papa, they will be raised in the incorruptible and they shall be changed. For this corruptible must be put on incorruption. And this mortal shall be put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption and the mortal has put on immorality, let's this, watch this. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written. Here's another thing's written, y'all ready? This is a stab, Eddie. This is in the Bible. This is in the Bible. That, watch this. This is non negotiable. <laughs> well, I've never seen a horse fly. You getting ready to? Here it goes, y'all ready? I'm excited to read this to you. Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, hell, hallelujah, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the, sin, the strength of the sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, be steadfast, non-negotiable, immovable, Always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor, knowing that today, y'all ready? Watch this. Knowing today, heaven knows that you're here right now. They know that you're here right now. It's not in vain for the Lord. Praise Him. I want you guys to come. Church, Jesus is coming back. Y'all ready? What if you knew He was coming back in the next five minutes? Would you be rejoicing? Like the Bible says, rejoice? Or are you sitting there going, um, I don't know if I'm saved. Man, I've not been the person that God's called me to be. Where are you at right now, sir? Ma'am, where are you at right now? Because listen to him, who knows? We got four minutes and 30 seconds. And the clock is counting. You say, Brian, man, you're too, too graphic in your sermons. Watch this, you ready? Hell is very graphic. The Bible says there's going to be gnashing of teeth. The Bible says there's going to be screams. You say, Brian, don't talk like that. I'm going to talk like that. Because that is a non-negotiable thing in my life that I know that is true. If there is a heaven, there is a hell. And who knows, the person sitting beside you, in front of you, or behind you, they may not know Jesus Christ. Yesterday, I buried a five-year-old baby. Five-day-old, I'm sorry, five-day-old. Five days. I left Elkhorn and I went to the second funeral. I buried a 61-year-old. I left there and got a phone call. A 97-year-old lady died. Five days old, 61, 97. I don't know, guys. All I know is this. There, there must be some things that are non-negotiable in your life. I believe, I admit and I confess that there is a man named Jesus Christ who was born on earth, who died a crucial death, who got put in a borrowed tomb. But on the third day, he got up. Everybody else, Methuselah stayed down, Muhammad stayed down, everybody else can be found in the ground. But my God got up on the third day. That is non-negotiable in my life. He is coming back, and it may be in three minutes and 20 seconds. I don't know. Hallelujah. Non-negotiable. We got too many Christians that are wishy-washy. If you don't like church, you just don't go. If somebody hurts your feelings, you step back. Can I tell you we're all going to fall? But I'm not falling back. <laughs> I'm going to fall forward. I'm going to ask you guys, listen, we're going to take Holy Communion here in just a moment. But before we do, I'm going to ask you one question. Y'all ready? I asked this all day yesterday. Yesterday, when I'd done the two funerals yesterday, the first one, there was a lady sitting right there on the front row. Right there on the front row. Beth, right there where you're at. 
just sit right in your seat right now where you're at. And guys, I thought about, we prayed over every seat in this church for, I'm telling you, for 90 days. Every seat. The seat that you're sitting in right now has been prayed for. It's been anointed by godly people. And they said, God, wherever they're at in life, God, touch them. God, save them, Jesus. We don't take this as a joke. I may never get to meet some of you ever again. This may be my last time ever meeting you again. This may be my last sermon. He really could be. But I want to confess today that I am born again. I got saved when I was seven years old at Hills Chapel Baptist Church. Brother Omer Farmer led me to the Lord. I still got my first Bible that my mama ever bought me. It's one of the most zip-up Bibles. Y'all remember them old school Bibles, hallelujah. I still got that. And I'm still in love with God. I am madly crazy, deeply in love with God. I just don't put Him on a shelf when I need Him. I just don't read the Bible when it's convenient. I got a relationship with my Father who art in heaven. Do you know Him? I know what the crowd decides. Somebody here today that you do not know him. By the way, time's up. Your decision's been made. If you have backslidden, you're looking at a backslider. I'm asking you, these are some non-negotiable things that Jesus was born from a virgin. Hallelujah. That Jesus lived a sinless life. Hallelujah. Jesus died on the cross for everybody. Red, yellow, black and white. People in prison, ISIS, all the ones that we don't like to talk about. Jesus loves them as much as he loves us. Jesus was buried and resurrected. Non-negotiable. Non-negotiable non-negotiable and as crazy as it sounds Jesus is coming back to get his people do you know him do you know him only you can answer that listen to me I see some of you squirming that's called Holy Ghost conviction sir I'm gonna give an invitation this altar's open if you would stand with me please Please, nobody leave, because here's the deal. We're getting ready to take communion. <laughs> this altar's open. My pastors are going to be up front. If you need a Savior, if you need Jesus Christ to come into your life and save you from your sins, if you're tired of living a backslidden life, watch this, if you want to get things right with Jesus Christ, you're at the right place at the right time. Listen, if you're, if you're living a good life, everything's going good for you, you ready? Pray! Pray for the person standing beside you. They may not know Jesus. I'd have never thought that woman yesterday on that front row that she didn't know Jesus Christ. I'd have never thought that that man, 61 years of age, he did, that, that, he, when he, that people were there that didn't know him. Raise your hand. I want to be saved. So in Jesus' name, while God is here, while God is working, let's go. Let's, let's come to this altar, church. Come on. It don't take a song to get you here. If your heart's beating really fast, if your heart's beating really fast, you can bring. Come on, hallelujah. Blake Clark's in the house today, amen. Yeah, we prayed for that day, amen. His son got baptized today, for God's sake, amen. We need to pray. Father God, do your thing. Move. Move, God. Come on, God. Move. Touch your people. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, church.